Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to the Eddie Sutton Show. Last week, Eddie, the Cowboys rode that emotional elevator one more time, first of all at home against the talented UNLV running Rebels, and then on the road against nationally ranked Texas Tech. Played very well against uh, UNLV, uh, defeated them 73-54, uh, lost to Texas Tech in overtime. Uh, the difference really is in the way you shoot the basketball. A lot of times people forget uh, if you shoot well, it camouflages a lot of those shortcomings you may have in other areas of the game. And when the ball doesn't go in the hoop, it magnifies some of the problems. And uh, those two games certainly would be uh, great examples because at home against the running Rebels, uh, we hit 12 out of 19 from beyond the arc, mm -hmm. which is really outstanding shooting when you're taking trays. We go down to Lubbock and we hit one out of 13. And that in itself is enough to beat you. I guess if we knew the answer to this, we probably could go into another line of business. But you've been coaching for so long. Why is that? I mean, the basket's still the same size. It's still the same height from the floor. Well, sometimes it uh, has a lot to do with the other team because they may, they may be uh, <laughs> guarding you a little closer yeah. than one ball club. But some nights, uh, and that's why uh, if you play solid defense and you rebound well and your kids play hard, even though you may have a bad shooting night, you're still in the ball game. And uh, I thought our, our players down at Texas Tech played uh, with a lot of intensity. We had a 13-point lead in the second half, and I think the downfall came there was the fact that we fouled too much. Mm -hmm. They shot 25 free pitches. Uh, we shot 12. We outscored four field goals from the, or four field goals from, uh, the field, but uh, you know, we, we put them on the line. They hit 21 out of 25 freebies, and uh, we've got to learn to play defense without fouling quite so much. But at least we walked away from that game, if there is such a thing as a moral victory, knowing that if you can go to Lubbock and play Texas Tech to overtime and you go to Boulder mm -hmm. and play the Buffaloes to overtime, this ball club is making a lot of progress. And in our game against uh, UNLV, I thought we played a terrific game. Well, the Cowboys ran the nation's longest home court winning streak against non-conference opponents to 69 this past weekend. That against the running Rebs of UNLV. We have all the highlights coming up after this opening timeout. Hey, you never know who's going to show up on this show. Welcome back to the Eddie Sutton Show. Eddie, the streak is safe for another year. Well, one goal the senior class always has is to try to maintain that uh, undefeated record against non-conference opponents in Gallagher-Iba, and they were able to do that this year. 69 straight wins. That, that streak started back, I guess, over a decade ago. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, that's a remarkable record and the longest uh, record in the country. Boy, this game started out just on the shaky side, getting down 9 nothing. You know, I thought we were a little flat. I called a quick timeout and told them if, uh, if they are going to play like that, I was going to put somebody else in the game. And, and I ended up play, playing uh, three different people early. But th they hit some big shots. I mean, I don't know if we were that flat or they just hit some good shots. But here we come. Marlon Dorsey came off the bench to really spark us. Probably played the best game uh, since he's been at Oklahoma State, and I know his mother down in Mississippi was excited. He was voted the CBS Player of the Game, and uh, certainly uh, deserved that uh, that honor. As you can see, as this uh, game goes on, it was raining threes at Gallagher Iba. I think uh, in the first half, uh, what did we hit? Uh, something like seven out of ten. That is correct. From the uh, three-point line, and uh, twelve out of nineteen for the game. Uh, Adrian Peterson. Chad Alexander and Marlon Dorsey all had four uh, threes for the ball game. There's Marlon hitting another one. Well, that's demoralizing to a team when uh, it starts raining threes like we uh, were hitting them. And there's a good shot by Brett Robich. Brett Robich is really starting to come on and play like I, I felt like he would all along, Tom. In our last three games, I think he's had nine, nine, and eight rebounds and has scored and, and is starting to play better defense. He is really stepped up his game, and that's one of the reasons we're playing a lot better. Great one-on-one -on -one move by Keanu Roberts. We try to isolate him sometimes. Terrific driver to the basket. You can get him one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, he usually can, uh, with his strength and quickness, can get the ball to the hoop and make good things happen. Very lazy pass there. They intercept, but a great recovery by Keontae. Makes a sensational block. Alex Weber hustling for the ball, and uh, they knocked it out of bounds. And here's another look at it. Clean block. Came from a long way to get that, and of course the Cowboys up big at halftime. This ball club scored nine points in the first five minutes, and we held them to ten points the last 15 minutes uh, of intermission. And the threes kept coming in the second half. Pete, I think, made the comment after the game that it's contagious. 
he hit him, Chad was hitting him, Marlon was hitting him, but they were feeding off each other. That's called momentum, and uh, that's true. That's uh, very accurate. It, people start hitting him, and then all, all of a sudden, everybody thinks they can throw him up, and, and they're going to hoop. They had a big man in there as well who could score. Didn't they had three looks. big guys. They, they had uh, Nesby's a very good player out on the perimeter, and Keani did a great job on him. There's a nice turnaround jump hook by Brett Robich. But they had Rose Green, Lane, and uh, Clark, all three big, powerful, strong players inside. Clark uh, is about 6'11", but with his arms, he's about 7'3". Good high-low here. Great pass. You know, you mentioned uh, Brett. Brett's got three straight games, double-figure scoring, just missing double-doubles. He's coming on. Yes, he is. And I think uh, the play of Maurice Robinson uh, and Brett Roby is giving us some consistent scoring inside has really allowed our basketball team to uh, play quite well here the last couple of weeks. Well, two nights later, the Cowboys, another national television appearance, another battle with nationally ranked Texas Tech. A team who are those that, two like, guys? That was taken back <laughs> a few years ago. That's James Dickey, who was my assistant four years at Arkansas and then four years at Kentucky and has just done a marvelous job in the time he's been out in Lubbock. I think he's... Uh, won over a hundred games in uh, five years. This game was nip and tuck all the way. Cowboys probably <laughs> played the best 27 minutes of basketball all year long. ESPN loved this game. <laughs> Look at that. The last time we take, 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 I was a sophomore, we beat them in the all-college tournament. But what people must understand, we haven't played Texas Tech very many times during the last 40 years. Look at that shot. But they certainly beat, beat us both times this year. And, it's hard to play James Dickey because he is family, and uh, I don't think he likes playing us. I told him, uh, Bad T, who I think is maybe the second best center in college basketball behind Duncan, I said, I hope he goes hard chip and, and Carr goes hard chip and you go to another conference. <laughs> maybe all that will take place before next year. I'll tell you what, they've got a great one-two punch in those two young men. It reminds me a lot of our ball club two years ago when we went to the Final Four with Big Country and Randy Rutherford where we executed well in the half court, especially in the first half. There's Bad T. Those pro scouts are drooling over that guy. He was good. sitting right to the left of us in the broadcast area, and they were taking notes. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a very good player. Good defense here. Great hard drive to the basket by uh, Keontae. Halftime, we led in this ball game, I think, 33-29, and then increased our lead in the second half. There's a good move by Brett Robich. He took the ball straight at the hoop, and Bad T, who's a good shot blocker, uh, wasn't able to knock it down. You're going to see another good move by Brett here on the miss. Very good follow shot. I think that was, was that Brett? Yeah. Uh -huh. Alex does the same thing here a little later in the ball game. We shot for the game uh, a decent percentage, 47% uh, in the first half. I think we shot 57%. And it kept the heat right on in the first six or seven minutes of the second half. I think the biggest thing in this ball game, uh, we got up on them, I think, 13 points, and you have to give them a lot of credit. Great high-low uh, situation. Uh, but their defense uh, got a little, a little tougher, and we got ourselves in foul trouble. Good two-on-one break. and. Uh, Chad took a pretty good shot there, but he knocked the ball away, so he gets a chance to shoot free throws. Chad uh, probably is one of our very best free throw shooters. In the last, these two games last week, we hit 9 out of 12, 7, 75% in both games, but you got to get to the line more than that. They went to the line 25 times, and I think uh, in the Vegas game, they went to the line 19 times. One thing that we've got to do is uh, drive that basketball more into the, to the basket and there's a careless pass, lazy pass. That kind of got them started. We're yeah. still leading in the ball game here. And uh, that little phrase when they brought in off the bench, Young, boy, he hurt us in both ball games. We can move by Dorsey underneath. Very good move. Good curl there, nice drive. And there's Alex with his follow shot, nice tip. One thing that uh, we've got to have, you know, we're kind of thin right now and players, we only took nine players with us to uh, Lubbock. Uh, our three freshmen, Joe Atkins, Alex Weber, Desmond Mason, they got to step up their game. They've got to give us some quality playing time. And I told them uh, earlier this week, I said, hey, you guys aren't freshmen any longer. Uh, we're over halfway through the season and, and uh, you just got to step up your game. They just haven't quite learned to relax at times in ball games. They don't play the same as we see them in practice every day. 
point, from this part on right, of the game, it, it was just tense all the way down to the end of regulation as both teams were hanging right in, fighting for all they were worth. It's a pretty nifty move yeah, around I'd about so. four white shirts <laughs> by Roberts. Yes, there you again. go again. There's Not a whole lot of room, one, is there? Goes by two, goes <laughs> by three. He's so strong, though. His upper body, he is extremely strong. And there's a mm -hmm. big play in the ball game. You never want to foul a three-point shot. And we had a four-point lead at the time, and Keanu closed hard on Carr and happened to bump him, and he hit the shot. And the thing that was tough was the fact that uh, Roberts had to go to the bench. That was his fifth foul. But I was proud of our other players. They hung in there, and there's Brett Robich hitting a big shot. And you can see we're up one point with less than a minute to go, and right now you got to play tough defense. And we did, and we fouled Carr. He had one out of two free throws. Game's tied right here. We ran a play, and you can see Pete didn't get a good look at the basket, and what he should have done was kick the ball down to Chad Alexander, who was below him, because what happened, uh, Chad's man switched off, and both of them, Carr and uh, young double-team mm -hmm. uh, Pete, and he didn't get a good look. At, he just didn't see Chad. I'm not sure Chad would have hit the shot, but I would have liked his shot a lot better. You know, this is not an exactly the same situation, but I remember a similar game, and you alluded to it in the open about – if you can't feel good or have a positive about a loss. But when we came out of Michigan State in the Final Four year, that was a hard-fought game up there. Cowboys lost it, felt terrible going to the dressing room, but knew they played well enough to win that game and took the momentum out of that game and won seven straight. Yeah, we went to the Final Four. Yeah, I like that. 17 <laughs> out of 19. Won, won the I'm Big 8 tournament and just went all the way and beat some good ball clubs in the NCAA, Alabama, Massachusetts, Wake Forest, and UCLA knocked us out in Seattle. But this ball club is getting better, and they just need to win a game on the road and gain some confidence. We played extremely well at home, and hopefully uh, this week we've got a uh, couple of games at home and then uh, before we have to go back on the road. Well, scheduling, it could be one of the most time-consuming parts of this coaching business, but certainly one of the most important, and we're going to explain that all to you right after these messages. There's no question the Cowboys have played one of the toughest schedules in the nation. This week's RPI report really gives credence to that fact. Well, the Cowboy non-conference opponents, 70% of the games this year they have won. We talked to Sean a little bit this past week about the art of scheduling and asked him whether he thought he had any inkling at all that the non-conference opponents would be this tough. I think we knew it would be pretty difficult. I think that a lot of people in this area, for example, didn't know a lot about the College of Charleston. We knew they were a very well coached basketball team, senior oriented, and uh, they're 15 and I think 15 and 2, the only two losses they've lost to us in Kentucky. Uh, we knew that Las Vegas would be a much improved basketball team. Certainly playing the NIT with the chance of playing UCLA or Tulsa, uh, one of those games, playing, playing either one of those teams was going to be a difficult game. And we've got some other good teams, like think about Nevada, they're doing very well in their conference. ORU, who we yet to play, uh, has had an outstanding season to this point. Uh, SMU has won 10 games in the WAC. And so I, I think that we knew it was going to be challenging, but we felt like uh, we had a lot of home games, which uh, we seem to win a lot of games here, and I think that's always important to have a lot of home non-conference games. There are a lot of things that go into making up a schedule. Tell us about a few of those. I think you've got to you know, pick your spots. I, I think it's important, we feel like, to expose our basketball team and our players uh, to play in some tough environments during the non-conference portion of your schedule because if you stay at home for 10 games, uh, you never travel, never go on the road, then you get into conference play, you don't have the experience of playing in front of a hostile crowd. And I think uh, the fact that we played at Tulsa, uh, Arkansas State was a very difficult place to play. Uh, we played at Arizona State. Those three games have given our young guys uh, an idea of what it takes to play on the road. And I think uh, we've gained some experience from that. And as a result, I think we've played much better in the, in the Big 12 Conference, with the exception of Texas, played well at Colorado, played well at Tech, both in hostile environments, and hopefully we can build on those two games and play better on the road down the stretch of the Big 12 Conference race. Do you think after this initial Big 12 Conference season, coaches up and down the line might lighten up the non-conference portion of the schedule because it is so difficult once league play begins? I think some people probably will. I think that you've got to Look at your schedule where you can get at least, you only get to play 10 games unless you play in a tournament of some kind, whether you go to Hawaii or Alaska or if you're in the preseason in IT. But you want to come out of there hopefully with eight or nine wins. 
But at the same point, if you get a chance to play on a national TV game, a lot of times you take that for the exposure. And we've been fortunate this year where CBS came in and did the UNLV game. Uh, hopefully next year we will get another game somewhere, either here or, or on the road, where we can get uh, some exposure and, and play on TV. I saw you and Randall working on it during the summer. It's not as easy as some people might think to fill the last three or four spots each and every year on your non-conference portion of the schedule. It's difficult because a lot of people don't want to come to Stillwater uh, and play because they know it's a very tough place to come and play. Uh, a lot of the guarantee games that you try to buy in some teams on certain, certain dates uh, because you've got to fill uh, a particular number of home games in this arena at least. Uh, that's what we've been asked to do and it becomes a bidding war and a lot of teams say well this team's going to do this for me, well, this school's going to do this, what will you guys do for me and it becomes a bidding war for who can get those teams and uh, it, it's very challenging, there's a lot of time, a lot of work that goes into it, a lot of time on the phone and uh, you've got to be patient and it just uh, hopefully you know it works out in the end. In your mind what would be the perfect schedule? To play 26 games right out here in this arena because we don't lose very often at home. I agree with Sean. If, if that's possible, <laughs> I'd like that too. And I'll tell you something else I'd like. I, I've to told this as a joke. Head coaches, when you get my age, you should never have to go on the road. You just coach at home and you let the assistants go on the road. But, of course, that's not going to happen either. One reason, uh, you know, it's important that we play so many home games because we are sold out. And basketball has become a big revenue mm -hmm. maker at a lot of schools, and they pay the bills for a lot of the other sports. So that's why we have to buy in two or three teams every year to fill out our schedule. But I thought uh, Sean really answered that question well. I think you have to play some tough people to season your ball club to get ready for conference play. Well, the notebook and the start of a very important string of ball games for Oklahoma State, that's all still ahead when we return to the Eddie Sutton Show. Hi, I'm Michaela, and you're watching the Eddie Sutton Show. Now back to Tom and Coach Sutton. Welcome back to the Eddie Sutton Show. And Eddie, that young lady we saw there, what a sensational voice. She sang the national anthem at the Missouri game, and everybody stopped. She's only 10 years old. What a great voice. She is. Let's go look at the uh, notebook right now. We've got a couple of things to cover back-to-back, -back, we call this. We've got the Big 12 schedule having teams play each other within a matter of days, your feeling. I don't think any coach likes that. We've got Baylor Saturday to Saturday, and I think the University of Missouri and Nebraska this last week had Saturday to Wednesday, and that's the same kind of schedule we have later, Texas A&M there on a Saturday, back here on a Wednesday. I don't think anyone likes that. Without a doubt, up till now, it's been a little nerve-wracking for the coaches. Four losses by 14 points, a couple in overtime, but yet the team's mindset is strong. I think uh, our ball club is improving. When you look at the uh, teams that we've lost to, uh, five of the losses have been to teams that are currently ranked in the top 25. So we really have played some quality ball clubs. But I like this team, and I think uh, if they continue to work hard and they don't, we don't have any injuries, we're going to win some ball games. It's time for some people to step up. There's some minutes out there for others to grab, and Marlon Dorsey is a great example. Marlon Dorsey has certainly stepped his game up, and I mentioned earlier in the show uh, Brett Robish and uh, Maurice Robinson, and I mentioned this also, I think our three rookies, Weber, uh, Mason, and Atkins, they're the key on how far this ball club will go. They've got to give us some additional depth. They've got to step their game up. Another big weekend. It begins on Saturday against Baylor, continues on Monday night, big Monday against Oklahoma. Big weekend, but we got them both here at home, and I like uh, our chances. You know, you look at that Baylor game, and as we said, this starts a string of games that I think our kids to a man, I know the coaches feel this way, this has to be the time that we start putting things together and get that kick in for their late season run. Our fans might forget last year we were 0-5 and five in conference yeah. play and rallied to go 7-7 seven and seven and probably was the, we were the second best team in the Big 8 a year ago next to Kansas. And then we went to the Big 8 tournament, stubbed our toe and didn't get to go to the NCAA for the first time in six years. Well, remember, Saturday afternoon, 3.05, Oklahoma State and Baylor. We look forward to seeing you in Gallagher Ibarina. For Eddie Sitton, I'm Tom Dorado, and we will see you next week.